stay tuned to the end of the episode for a mammoth announcement. In 2000, food science researchers found something surprising about a part of our diet so basic, we don't even really think of it as a thing. They fed a group of people 450 calories in jelly beans, best experiment ever, while they gave the other group a drink with 450 calories. And the group that ate solid food responded pretty much how you'd expect. They felt full. They even reduced their eating for the rest of the day by about 450 calories. But the group that drank their calories didn't. They went on eating as normal, and some even ate more than usual. Scientists ran similar experiments again and again, and they repeatedly found the same thing. Drinks don't make us full. Now, researchers aren't 100% sure why. It might be that liquids enter our intestines faster than food, or that beverages don't trigger that I'm full peptides that we get from certain foods. But either way, it turns out our bodies haven't quite mastered drinking. And that's because of our past. For almost all of human history, as adults, we drink just one thing, water. While beverages from coffee to cocktails are basic in many cultures today, humans only entered our modern beverage era relatively recently. Yep, that's actually what scientists call it. And our bodies just haven't caught up yet. So when exactly did we start drinking other things, and why? To find out, we have to look at the world's oldest beverages, which might not be what you expect. Okay, before we dive in, a reminder that this is all based on what's been written or preserved in the archaeological record and uncovered by scientists. So it likely has some biases based on where archaeologists have focused their work. And some intriguing finds emerging recently in places far from the general Western science-focused regions remind us that there's probably still a lot more to learn. Now, if you had to guess what the oldest beverage is, you might speculate that it's something like fruit juice. For the most part, though, it seems like ancient humans didn't bother turning fruits into juice. They just ate the fruit. Plant-based drinks are pretty old, though. For example, modern coffee made from roasted beans first appeared about 600 years ago, probably in part of what was then Yemen but is now Saudi Arabia. These coffee drinkers prized it for helping them stay alert during religious ceremonies. Drinks made of sweetened lemon juice are even older, potentially dating back to over a thousand years ago in Cairo. And tea jumps back further in the beverage timeline, first popping up in Chinese legends about 4,700 years ago. But tea isn't our oldest beverage, and wine isn't either, even though it dates back to around 8,000 years ago in Georgia, the country, not the state. There are still two drinks that date back even further and are in competition for marking the beginning of the modern beverage era, and they are incredibly different from each other. A big piece of evidence for one of these beverages is a clay tablet from Mesopotamia in what's now Iraq. It dates back to 6,000 years ago and tracks the size of cow herds. These ancient records likely indicate that these people, the Sumerian civilization, kept animals to produce dairy. So was our oldest beverage a glass of milk? In 2019, researchers at London's Natural History Museum confirmed that drinking animal milk is definitely at least that old. To prove it, they checked with these ancient milk drinkers themselves. And while they couldn't ask them directly, they could scrape plaque from the teeth of skeletons, some dating to nearly 6,000 years ago from across Britain. It was too late to help with their dental hygiene, but it did reveal what they drink. Within the plaque, scientists found milk proteins. Back then, milk would have solved several problems. It's rich in vitamin D, which makes it good for people who struggle to produce enough in less sunny climates like Britain. And it also contains vitamin C, which is useful in places where fresh fruits are rare, like Central Asia. Researchers even believe the consumption of this beverage might have extended the lifespans of Neolithic people. So is milk our oldest beverage then? Well, maybe, maybe not. There's actually another surprising drink that seems to appear around the same time. And while milk is a practical drink, the other beverage is kind of the opposite. Back in Sumerian society, archaeologists have found pictographs showing oddly shaped pots with narrow necks and sharp pointed bottoms. 
Dating to over 5,000 years ago, these images seem to illustrate ancient breweries for making beer. Other Sumerian texts show they had something like 19 different beers, more than enough to start a brew pub. In fact, beer seems to have been so popular that some researchers estimate 40% of Mesopotamian grain may have gone to brewing. Other ancient texts reveal that some Sumerian workers even got paid in beer, up to five liters per day. But why beer? Well, beer purifies drinking water and also has its fair share of minerals and B vitamins. But beer's main appeal seems to have been its effect. Beer drinkers likely valued the beverage for the intoxicating experience. One ancient Egyptian scroll from about 3,400 years ago, for example, basically cautioned people that after drinking beer, you might say things you won't remember afterwards. So we know the Sumerians enjoyed both milk and beer, but what about everybody else? It turns out there's one place that's great for tracking down humanity's earliest beverage, a place with a well-preserved drinking culture, China. On the Chan River in northern China, archaeologists have found two underground rooms that are probably around 5,000 years old. And inside, they found a stash of pots, stoves, and stone funnels, all things you'd use to brew beer. A closer look confirmed that these chambers are ancient breweries. On the funnels, archaeologists found grains, probably millet and barley. They also found gunk, and once they scraped it off, vaporized it, and scanned the cloud of ions, they discovered it was calcium oxalate, a sediment that settles out of beer as it ferments. But that's not China's oldest beer. Even older beverages pop up in an unexpected place, tombs of the dead. Toasting dead relatives at the grave site was common in some parts of China, and families often buried the drinking glasses with the bodies. And by 5,500 years ago, a striking feature appeared in this graveyard pottery, legs. Researchers think that these might have acted like a tripod to heat alcohol over a fire, warming it for graveside toasts. But going back even farther, between 9,000 and 7,500 years ago, there's another big change in graveyard pottery, pots with pinched necks. These thinner necks would have made it easy to seal a container, which is something you might do to ferment drinks, like beer. And in 2019, archaeologists confirmed that these were probably early beer vats. By analyzing the residue from the pots, they found evidence of starches, fungi, and fermentation-related gelatin. They also detected flavorings like ginger and snake gourd root. So does 9,000-year-old beer mark the start of the modern beverage era? While evidence from ancient pottery says yes, what about drinks from before there were pots? In European history, there's a whole period known as the pre-pottery Neolithic, lasting from about 12,000 to 8,500 years ago. And some of the world's leading beverage archaeologists have long suspected that during this period, people drank milk. And one of the leaders of this old milk movement was Jean-Denis Vignet at France's National Museum of Natural History. But Vignet's ideas clashed with a major archaeological concept called the Secondary Products Revolution. This theory, which appeared in the early 1980s, states that secondary animal products like milk, as opposed to primary products like meat, couldn't be as old as China's graveyard beer. Because the theory stated these early human societies supposedly weren't organized enough to keep animal herds for milking. But other old milk researchers kept finding piles of goat and sheep bones, the remains of herds they strongly suspected ancient people kept for milk. The problem was, these were not associated with any pottery to check for milk residue. So Vignet and his team looked at modern ranching techniques, which suggested that another way to spot ancient milk could be by looking at the animal's ages. See, herds kept for milking often contain older animals. Because with meat herds, ranchers usually slaughter as soon as animals reach full size, but milking animals can be productive much longer. So the team linked these animals' ages with tooth size, comparing the teeth of modern animals to the skeletons at archaeological sites. And several bone piles contained groups of older animals, which suggested they could be the remains of milking herds. 
The oldest known sites they found with milking aged animals were in Turkey, Syria, and Iraq, and some dated to over 10,000 years old. While this pushed back the beverage timeline even further, putting milk in the lead for the oldest beverage, the debate continues. In 2001, analysis of a human skeleton from Iran that was 11,000 years old showed signs of the disease brucellosis, which usually comes from exposure to unpasteurized dairy. But in 2018, an archaeological team found possible beer residue in a cave settlement in Israel that's 13,000 years old. And while the increasingly older archaeological discoveries may lead us to think the debate may never be settled, perhaps the oldest beverage evidence actually comes from our own bodies. Researchers have recently been examining the genes that allow adult humans to produce lactase, the enzyme that breaks down milk. And they found that a series of genetic adaptations that led to widespread milk drinking might be as old as 20,000 years. But even if our beverage era does reach that far back, it's worth remembering that this timeline is incredibly recent. Our species, Homo sapiens, has been around for nearly 300,000 years, and for almost that entire history, we only drank water. Although researchers are still uncovering the details of where, when, and why our modern beverage era began, the two oldest drinks provide some clues. The nutrition acquired from milk reflects how humans valued vitamins and ready energy. Meanwhile, the old beer could reveal a different side to ancient humans, a more social one. So just maybe, these two oldest beverage contenders show us two sides of ourselves, the practical side and the not so practical side. Either way, the next time you reach for a delicious drink, it's worth remembering just how recent this delicious practice really is. Cheers. We recently partnered with toy designer David Silva to create a scientifically accurate, hand-painted figure of a woolly mammoth. The 1 18th scale mammoth figure is designed based on the latest science and painted using references to modern day creatures living in the same environments. The mammoth is available now through Backer Kit. More information is in the description. Did you know the plaque on your teeth called dental calculus is the only part of your body that actually fossilizes while you're alive? Find out more in our episode, The 40 Million Year Old Ecosystem in Your Mouth. And we got a cheers to this month's eontologists. Addie, Annie and Eric Higgins, Carl Wolfel, Jake Hart, John Davidson Ng, Juan M, Melanie Liam Carnivale, and Raphael Hassa. Become an Eonite at patreon.com slash eons and you can get fun perks like an Eons Paleo Art Digital Puzzle. And as always, thank you for joining me in the Ken Barnes studio. Subscribe at youtube.com slash eons for more prehistoric stories. And inside, they found a stash of pots, stoves, and stone funerals. Funnels. Very different things. <laughs> oh, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, jeez. All right. <clears throat>